Senegal don't shock the whole Africa. Senegal elected 43 years old man as their president. Hey! What the fuck? Wow. 43 years old youth eh? as the president. That is now now on the power day for in hand. That is the youths are deciding their future. Youths of Senegal are collecting their future. They are deciding it in our Kurokuro. Something where Nigerians will no feed do. Hey. <clears throat> our own Nigerian youth man. <laughs> the win best female dressed. <laughs> Our own male youth, <laughs> the win female best dressed. <laughs> I be the universe, they work against us. <laughs> what to be this? <laughs> Nigeria nominates man <laughs> among women <laughs> for best dressed. <laughs> And not the man win them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you say they give up risky the best female dressed for as I want. He collects. You remember we've been there never last since begin the shop. What kind of rubbish is this? <laughs> He's a man, he's a man. <laughs> 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 That's the first thing Now we men they nepo this guy's past. But them the first time, go, go, you are mommy of Lagos. <laughs> he don't say it. <laughs> 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 we men away the shot equality now. Men don't they collect their rights. <laughs> For this country, <laughs> una go there now. <laughs> una go see am man go collect commission of women affairs. <laughs> I be don't even happen. <laughs> you go there one day, you go see say they nominate man as women leader. <laughs> you go shock everybody. <laughs> this is no one guesses. <laughs> <laughs> you go see the women leader will be mango come out. My fellow women, eh? <laughs> <laughs> women go shock. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you be mad. <laughs> I'm gonna continue there, never them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 you, do you have a feeling that in some way that Nigeria is headed for in the right direction under this government in the last nine months? Anaki looms. Where? In Nigeria. How do you mean? Anaki is defined as a state of disorder, 
due to absence of or non-recognition of authority or other controlling systems. In this nation now, you could see the absence of government in the security and welfare of the people. Total absence. Let's take the issue of security. And you see why I always cry about rule of law. Anarchy is the absence of rule of law and the presence of state of nature, which Thomas Hobbes described as being characterized in a nation where life has become short, brutish, nasty, poor, and solitary. We are approaching the state of nature. Take the issue of security. More than 200 persons were massacred on the eve of Christmas in Plateau State. Where was your government? They were in Lagos celebrating Christmas party. Absence of government. Shown in March alone. And March has not reached. Today is 20th. So meaning within two weeks of March, more than 165 farmers have been killed and 3 billion naira demanded as ransom. Farmers, we have 109 senatorial zones in Nigeria, meaning for the first two weeks of March, average of more than one farmer has been killed in every senatorial zone. Absence of government. You have seen in this March how 287 innocent children and poop heels we are taken in Kaduna and headed like cattle into the bush without anybody confronting them. No security presence, absence of authority as anarchy. Would you blame all of this on this present government? You have seen how our men on uniform, 17 of them, massacred in South South. When this government came in, they gave their office, the villa, with coat of arms to a non-state actor to malign our officers, to call them thieves. Is it by accident that the massacring of those 17 soldiers we are from the area where the same person that called them thieves came from? I shouted and warned because I've been a lawyer to the army and I'm bearing a wound in my heart that I defended some officers in the court martial won cases for them and some of them went into the field and they were massacred by bandits terrorists so I am personally pained I shouted I said this government you don't know the damage you are doing to the image of our armed forces that you are allowing somebody to come to Asorok sitting on the coat of arms meaning he's bearing the effrontery of the government to call our military men thieves now you have seen that the people are now treating the military men as thieves massacring and killing them when they just went to make peace in march alone that can be described as much madness in the southeast, you saw how people went into the UNTH Medical College and abducted the deputy director and the security man. In the southwest, you saw how two traditional leaders were killed and they stretched their hand to Kwara and killed another traditional ruler. In Sokoto, you saw the way they were kidnapped. In Boronu, who go to IDP camps. I've just mentioned the six geopolitical zones where it's safe. In FCT, Nabiha died. And this government, you see, these bandits do no longer recognize the authority of this government. That's why somebody has the effrontery to come out publicly and say, let me negotiate, let the government buy me to negotiate with the terrorists. That was why the terrorists kidnapped 287 persons and demanded 40 trillion naira as ransom. Why? They are looking at themselves as the government. That is anarchy, non-recognition of the authority of government. 
And we're talking only about security. You want to talk about the economy? And you will be amazed. And you want to talk about rule of law? The problem is that this government does not even articulate its policies before bringing it out. Look at the student loan scheme. A government on its own prepared the law. Took it to the National Assembly. The National Assembly it's not only appointees that take a bow and go. Even legislation take bows and go. The National Assembly, the photocopy, National Assembly, allowed the student loan scheme to take a bow and go. And the executive now discovered that they could not even implement it because the provisions are unimplementable. And nobody in the National Assembly even pointed it out. The executive had to go back to National Assembly to write another bill. Student loan scheme. Their own policy. The bill was from them. And they confessed it was unimplementable by their own letter. Within nine months. And the bow and go National Assembly. They still took the bill and told the amended bill to bow and go. First subsidy is gone. They are paying almost a trillion naira monthly on first subsidies. So what have they achieved apart from punishing the people? Employment, expatriate employment levy. They introduced it without even consulting man, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. They have now removed it. They sanctioned Niger Republic. Ill advisedly punished the whole eight northern states, predominantly Muslims. The Muslim Muslim ticket. And after nine months, they removed it. The Israeli Republic said, No, we're not ready yet. You know why? Because you may have the right to declare when a war will commence, but you will not have the right to declare when it ends. This government is bereft of knowledge. That is why, before you declare war, you would have to analyze how it will end and know whether you can go in. Nigeria is not Lagos where you sit down and you decree things and you expect it to work that way. Nigeria is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multinational society. And you have to factor in every interest. And you have to employ the utilitarian school of thought in your decisions and law. And this school of thought says... You must look at how you will achieve the greatest happiness of all. Or the greatest number of people whenever you want to make a policy. So if you are doing any policy that has six geopolitical zones, your aim is four geopolitical zones and above. This government in terms of appointment is just concentrating, not even on Southwest. On the Lagos axis of the Jagabanic proteges, tainted with the Mbiloko philosophy. Just that axis alone. And you're thinking you want to command loyalty, national loyalty? You won't even get it from Southwest. You want to command national loyalty? As a management student, they taught me about bureaucratic sabotage. This government is going to have an avalanche of it. Now, bureaucratic sabotage means, for instance, I am a director in a company and I'm coming to my office. There is a bottle, broken bottle that I just saw. I know if I leave this bottle, it's going to pierce somebody and wound somebody. But I also know that I am not the cleaner. It's not my duty. So if I pretend I didn't see it, nobody is going to hold me responsible. But I just sabotage bureaucracy because that bottle will wound somebody and the image of the organization will not be done. So people will not sabotage you when they have a sense of belonging and when they have a sense of loyalty to you. So it is not every sabotage that is illegal. There are some sabotage that is inspirational. People will like, why would I die for this government? Why would I do this? It's not my job. But they needed to do it to help your government. That's why we need inspiring leaders. Leaders that can make people to do something that is right, even when they are not there. Is that why you supported Peter Obi? 
Absolutely. You think Peter Obi is better than what we are having today? An inspiring leader. That those who believe that Peter Obi does not even measure up. He was there in Anambra State. Those who say you cannot compare Anambra and Lagos State, if that is the indice. Good. You can compare the policies. You can compare the environment. When P2B came into Anambra State, Anambra was coming last in education. The governor, governor of Anambra State, the former governor, Chimwo Kembadunuju, was the only governor that PDP did not allow to return for the second term. Only. So you can imagine the level of, of, of debt that Anambra State was suffering. People were massacred on the street, including the chairman of MBA. Security was terrible. Infrastructure was comatose. Education was appalling. Peter B. came in. Turned the whole situation. Within two years, three years, Anambra was coming first. The medical facilities, golden. Infrastructure, superb. He changed it from consumption to production. That even some of his opponents that don't know what they say, <laughs> they are accusing him that he invested a number of state money in some companies that are yielding something for a number of state today. He met nothing in a number of state. He saved so much that the subsequent governor used part of it to build an international airport by his own confession. You don't compare gold with carrots. Is that what you would say between Peter Obi and Bola Tinobu? That those who say Anambra does not measure up. You can't measure Anambra and Lagos State by every standard. You know, when you want to judge a man, you judge him by his antecedents. You know what happened in Lagos? The Emiloko philosophy is family to Have you ever seen Pitobi receive any land in Anambra State? He rejected every land, including the one he's entitled to go to Lagos State. You know better than myself. Some people describe the owners of Lagos as the largest land owners in the whole of West Africa. Go to Lagos. The same dynasty has been ruling from 1999. Wife, senator, daughter, Yagwebe, son. Even in, as the leader of Nigeria, <laughs> the same pattern. I mean, you, you're making allegations of nepotism. That's it's what you... not allegations. The facts are there. That this government is nepotistic? Something worse than nepotistic. Is that fair to say? A militocracy. You know what it means when you place your children in order of protocol before ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? What do you call that? What do you call that I saw? What is that? You know what it means when you put your wife at par with the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in terms of manpower, in terms of security? Have you seen a Michelle Obama being involved in the political process of America? Let me tell you, I thought Buhari's regime was going to be the worst. In nine months, this government has surpassed it. Let me tell you, this government started from the man himself, to the wife, to the sons, using the private jet to attend parties, desecrating the hollow chamber of leadership. Talk about the daughters, talk about the sons-in-laws, the daughters-in-laws. Then when you go to the daughters and sons of friends, what do you call that? What leadership system is that? It's a country that has these geopolitical zones. And you're just appointing only the people from that your little clique. And you're expecting loyalty. This government, Mr. Okonkwo, said, look, we're making some policies. They might be painful in the moment, but it's going to be like the pangs of childbearing. In the end, it's going to be some joy. Are you hopeful of the possibility that this process is just momentary? At the end of the day, there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
in all of these policies that this government is putting in place. If your wife is pregnant and after the pangs of childbirth she gave birth to a monster would you rejoice? All their policies have been given birth to monsters, not children. You thought us first subsidy is gone. And after punishing the people, the first subsidy is remaining. What have you given birth to? Monster. You told us you're unifying the dua foreign exchange. And after a while, Naira has become worthless. Even less valid than the safer. And you again, you're telling us, no, that's not the true reflection of the value of Naira. And you are the one who voluntarily devalued the Naira, uh, Naira to that level. Is that childbirth? No. That is a monster. You told us that you're imposing sanctions on the Nigerian Republic so that they would go back to democracy. Have they gone to democracy? You lifted the sanction. What have you achieved? You punished the eight states of the north from KB to Sokoto, to Zamfara, to Jigawa, to Katsina, to Yobe, to Boronu. You brought all of them, punished them immensely. And after eight months without achieving anything, is that childbirth? No. Childbirth is that you gave birth to something new. When thesis and antithesis meet, they give birth to synthesis. That is something new. Childbirth. Not when you finish punishing the people and you go back to a situation that is worse than they were when you started the policy. That is monster. So this government, sorry, the pangs of childbirth have been a punishment. You're telling people to be patient. And you're wearing a watch. What of millions? Why you're telling people to be patient? Is that childbirth? You're telling people to be patient. You say you want to, uh, you know, implement or run sign a report. And you have 48 ministers. Even Motala Mohammed, when he became head of state, Alan, the first thing he did was to purge himself. To say, look, this, this, this is not right. I will start with myself. If you want to implement such things like Orosanya, start with yourself. Orosanya is about cutting the cost of governance. So where is the child birth in this? No, it's not child birth. It is monster. I can tell you, with all the pains in a woman, if she gives birth and she discovers she has given birth to a monster, she herself will run away. Nigerians are running away from these so-called policies because they are simply punishing the people for nothing. 2,000 naira for a dollar and you say it's a childbirth no it's a monster so you don't believe there is hope I've always said there is renewed hopelessness that's what I am seeing why are you so pessimistic I am not pessimistic that's the best optimism you can give so that they can even see whether they can change when they removed first subsidy, I say reverse it that day. And they said I was pessimistic. What's happening today? <laughs> Why people did not die of hunger then was they had savings. And then they deceived them that over a little while, these things will be okay. They are no longer deceiving them. They finished their savings. It's not okay. And you see, they've already started preparing their mind that, look, oh, even if the refining is not working, that does not mean the price will fall. Then what is the child belt that you have given birth to? That's a monster. You just gave birth to a monster. You perhaps have in your mind that if yes. Peter Obi was a president, things would have been different. Things would have been sweet. If Peter Obi was a president. Yes, because when Peter Obi tells you sacrifice, you will see the sacrifice by himself first. But you supported a Buhari yes. got into office. Yes. Now, those who believe that Buhari government led us into this mess. Good. Buhari's government was good from 2015 to 2019. And now, you know, you grow every day. That has taught me about the need for the independence of the legislature. What is government were they were not allowed to borrow against the law because there was a Saraki and Dogara who were independent of the executive. In 2015 to 2019, that was when you had 
Boko Haram was technically defeated. Everything was moving towards the right direction. I entered ABC 2016. So, the last duty I did with APC publicly was 2018. After 2019, and we had the rubber stamp National Assembly, that was when everything went sour. The 22 trillion naira you are hearing, ways and means, most of them were done within 20, uh, from 2019 to 2023. Everything evil. That was when everything went haywire. Security and all this because there was a rubber stamp national assembly. Who will agree to whatever they bring? But it was not like that in the first term. So when this government came in, and it's not just being rubber stamp but photocopy, I knew the government was gone. So you blame the Ahmed Lawan and Femi Bajabi Amna leadership of the national assembly for the failure of the Buhari government in the second term. Do you know? The only reason that you have legislature is to check and balance the excesses of the executive. The only reason. And look at how much we are wasting on the legislature. And yet, they cannot do the job. They contributed substantially to what happened to that regime. Do you regret supporting Buhari? No, I don't. Would you still support him if you had your dictionary? There is no word like regret. I wrote, I wrote a dictionary and sent it to Oxford. They looked at it. And they returned it and said they will not approve it. And I resisted and petitioned them. And they said it's because they checked my dictionary and the word regret was not there. So I don't have any word regret in my dictionary. You learn from your mistakes. So it was a mistake supporting Buhari? No. As at the time I supported him, he was doing things right. If you had the opportunity of going back to the APC, would you take it? Would you take a Tesla power wall and brand new solar panels at no cost? If so, then you need to watch this. If you had the opportunity of going back to the APC, would you take it? I've always said, I don't belong to the category of using the word never. Because as a theologian, you are rogating God to yourself. It's only God that knows tomorrow. I don't have that intention. I don't have that inclination. But I am the last to say never. Because never belongs to God. If you allow me to say, I'll say I will not. But I will not say never. Because never belongs to God. You've been wanting to become an Ugo State Governor. Yes. You still have that ambition. Whoever is in politics can no longer pretend he's not interested in power. What do you want to use the power for? That is what will guide you and drive you. However, presently, I do not have any intention for any political office. I am more focused on my job as a lawyer, my litigation, my businesses. And then trying to ensure that we have a new Nigeria. Because you have to secure the ground first before looking for the mat. So you might still go back to wanting to become governor of Enugu State, but not for now. As far as I am concerned with me, anything can happen tomorrow. It's in the hand of God. But today, I am not interested in becoming governor of Enugu State. Today, I am not. Let me take you to the politics of your party. Your party is in disarray, the Labour Party. You see what is happening? Yes, we are sir. one of those calling for the head of Julius Abure. Why? <laughs> I don't know whether you are right. <laughs> but I know that I said I disagree with the clandestine nature of where they want to handle the issue of national convention. I find it unconstitutional and I find